Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and today we're going to be talking about general weather for the Australian region. We've got a little bit to talk about in today's video, so if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. We're going to be talking about some rainfall for central Queensland, a bunch of rainfall now expected for Western Australia and areas around um, the northern parts of Western Australia. Then we're going to move up to far north Queensland and talk about some rainfall that's expected up there. And then we're going to go and take a look at the tropic scenes because we do have two developing tropical systems one in the Indian Ocean and one in the Philippine Sea, which we will need to take a little look at. But we're going to start things off with general weather along the New South Wales and Queensland forecast. We're starting things off this morning with a little bit of a warmer night, actually, uh, compared to last night. Much more milder temperatures experienced along the New South Wales coastline overnight, which is uh, definitely welcome considering the cold that was experienced la uh, the other night uh, that we were talking about in yesterday's video. But yeah, it does look like it's a little bit warmer this morning, but there is a little bit of cloud streaming ashore, and that would be the reason for that increased heat. And that means that there'll be a shower or two along a lot of the New South Wales coastline, extending right up from the Victoria-New South Wales border and probably up towards Coffs Harbour, or even as far north as the Queensland-New South Wales border, including Sydney and Newcastle expecting some showery conditions there, but it should only be a couple of millimetres. We're not expecting anything crazy in terms of rainfall throughout the course of today, and it's been driven by this low-pressure system in the Tasman Sea, which is now impacting New Zealand. It's driving a lot of rainfall up, and those cold winds, those um, almost Arctic winds up from the uh, Southern Ocean, and as a result, there is some good rainfall that, uh, well, not good rainfall, but some good winds uh, that will be accompanying those, uh, that, those rain showers, rather. So it might be a little bit cold in Sydney today. Make sure you've got that extra extra jacket in the car or ready to go because the temperatures should not exceed 18 degrees a lot of the area and combined with a wind chill we're not going to be seeing feels like temperatures reach higher than 14 or 15 degrees around Sydney and further north as well. Brisbane will probably be a very similar story as well in terms of rainfall not expecting anything crazy in the next three days up there the showers should remain just offshore or at least very close to the coastline and basically the only major population centre expecting any kind of rainfall over the next three days from this low pressure area shower event is of course Newcastle because it does stick out a little bit Newcastle and Foster expecting up to maybe 15 millimeters or so nothing to write home about nothing crazy up there but this is a weather forecast we're going to um, hammer out all of the details on this weather system we're going to switch it back over to the rain forecast because later next week from this weekend onwards we're going to be looking at uh, this part of Queensland quite closely the East Bay and also the Axis G3 calling for a bit of a rainfall event to uh, spark itself up on the Queensland coastline inland from Rockhampton, Gladstone and Mackay. Now it's not going to be anything crazy by the looks of things but we're going to be seeing this uh, more enhanced um, onshore breeze sort of uh, pattern extending up from Harvey Bay and Fraser Island right through to Mackay and that's going to be bringing showers ashore for that location uh, as we get into next week. And so this rainfall could also be quite heavy on the Queensland coastline here. This is an interesting forecast here. I'm not seeing any low pressure area that's going to be sparking this weather, um, weather event specifically. The Axis G3 is calling for something similar to happen, but it seems like it's got it a few days early. And the GFS as well calling for a bit of a shower event to spark up in central Queensland. What I think is going to be happening here is a thunderstorm event. There's going to be a lot of energy for potential thunderstorms just offshore from the coastline. For this time of the year, uh, convective available potential energy values of approaching 100 or 150. That is quite high for this part of Queensland. Uh, it's nothing compared to the values that we can see in summer, but we could be seeing a little bit of a thunderstorm event pipe itself up late or mid next week uh, maybe Wednesday or Thursday uh, onwards and we could be seeing as a result from that over the next 10 days rainfall accumulations approaching 70 millimeters for this part of central Queensland certainly some much needed rainfall because the places that have actually missed out on Queensland's incredibly wet summer have been around Emerald Rockhampton and Gladstone so 70 millimeters will certainly be welcome and it's about the only place in Queensland that actually needs a decent amount of rainfall here uh, please Please remind me if there are other places, maybe even further inland into um, the more western parts of Queensland or into the southern parts of Queensland, but definitely along the coastline up in far north Queensland, they do not need any more rainfall whatsoever. So this is not a bad thing to have on the forecast at this time. It's not 100% reciprocated between forecast models, so GFS is a, a little bit further inland. This will certainly be thunderstorm based considering its location. The Access G3 calling for negligible rain activity along the uh, Queensland coastline. 
They've got a lot happening in Central Australia though, but we're gonna be touching on that later on in the video. We're gonna now move up north into far north Queensland because although there has been some dry conditions there, especially over the last 24 hours, uh, the, those conditions are not going to be lasting and it looks like there is some good rainfall now on the cards, up to 150 millimeters if it possible. Uh, most of it will be starting from tomorrow. We're gonna be seeing some rainfall throughout the course of Wednesday, maybe 15 millimeters for some areas. And this rainfall is gonna pick up throughout the course of Tuesday, uh, Thursday morning uh, and then into Friday as well. We're likely gonna be seeing 50 millimeters fall in some parts of far north Queensland around Innisfail and Cairns. We're just gonna zoom out to get a better look here um, by this weekend. So some good rainfall expected up there. Nothing too crazy though, 50 to 100 millimeters is stuff that they can handle. Uh, same thing on uh, the weekend as well, a little bit more rainfall expected and it looks like it continues right through into next week. But by Tuesday evening and into Wednesday and Thursday, holding out to hope here, but it does look like some dry weather is on the cards. Now this is of course just continuous intermittent showers which should have stopped about a month ago at this point, but they are continuing. Uh, so once again, just make sure you are exercising caution on wet roads, especially up in this part of Queensland because any further rainfall is going to become ground off and that will cause minor flooding in some areas and yeah 100 millimeters falling in a 24 hour period would be a very big concern especially for this time of the year when they're not really expecting it and it kind of is on the cards in all fairness um, later on this week maybe Thursday or Friday it looks like there could be a good amount of rainfall falling there it's just that typical southeasterly winds that are driving this weather conditions it's nothing out of the ordinary but once again these southeasterly winds should have stopped and the wind should be more from the south or even the southwest about this time of the year and there should be some dry weather for a lot of far north Queensland which we just haven't been seeing yet uh, so it is kind of unfortunate especially for folk up in far north Queensland who are holding out for that uh, sunshine to come I do assure you it will come whether it comes this week or next month um, it kind of is a bit of a waiting game at this time uh, but yeah, in the wettest part of Australia, there is expected to be rain all year, but it would be great to get some sun up there to dry things out. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section down below as well. That cold front as well for Western Australia, it is a go-go by the looks of things. We're going to pull this weather forecast back to this weekend's forecast. From Sunday onwards, it looks like we're going to get this weak high pressure system, which keeps this cold front down here, which is actually rather strong. It pushes it further south, deeper into the roaring 50s, about 45 degrees south, um, and it's a Presses any rain activity for Perth, but it looks like the southwest might get clipped with a little bit of rainfall Sunday night into Monday morning, maybe 15 millimetres there, before what looks to be a pretty big cold front. This is a nasty one by the looks of things. It is further into the roaring 40s, and this one here being pushed forward by a strong high pressure system, which looks to separate it into a big rain system. And in front of it, we get a boundary front here, which looks like it's going to cause a significant thunderstorm event far up in the southwest of Western Australia. If the the Eastern Rubber model is correct. It looks like Tuesday evening and into Wednesday morning next week, we're going to see a lot of rainfall come ashore in the Perth metro area, maybe up to 30 millimetres of it falling in just a couple of hours on Wednesday, and then a big shower pool behind it for some icy conditions on Thursday for a lot of the southwest. Now, if this model does pan out to be correct, it is what I've been calling the winter opener, and behind it, there's going to be cold front after cold front after cold front. I'm really hoping that it is correct because it is rainfall we so desperately need in the Perth metro metro area so really really hoping for it at this time um, but again the GFS model just hasn't been supporting it yet and typically I want to see two or three forecast models supporting it before I call it but the GFS is still calling for something to happen Wednesday onwards so definitely next week there is some rainfall now on the cards that's basically a certain and a guarantee at this point but then yeah look at this uh, behind that uh, primary weather system if that makes it to Western Australia by maybe Saturday or Sunday the I'm going to say the 2nd of June uh, we could be in for a pretty wild bunch of storms to come ashore at Western Australia area there and the Axis G3 has a pretty, um, well, not a similar, a completely different forecast by the looks of things. They are still calling for a little bit of a front to come ashore later on this weekend, but this cold front here is going to be suppressed a lot further to the south by this high pressure system about the latitude of Perth. And because we're going to be having an awful lot of tropical activity up in the Indian Ocean uh, from the positive IOD and the, uh, what's it called, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, the MJO, we're likely going to be seeing a bit of a thunderstorm event fire up over the West Australia 
Australian waters here between the Cocos Islands and actually Western Australia. Now this is an unlikely forecast to happen but considering it is from the Axis G3 and as I have said it can be accurate in the 10 day forecast range and it also has been saying this for the last couple of days. This is something very much worth watching um, at this point. Do I think that we're going to see a big thunderstorm event fire up over northern Western Australia? Not at all, not for a second, definitely not this time of the year but it is certainly something that I'm going to be watching because it is something that we can learn from on the forecast models and see what models bias and so forth uh, but we will just keep on watching this thunderstorm event just to make sure nothing does catch us off by surprise. But yeah, that is a long-winded West Australian forecast. We're now going to jump up north into the Philippine Sea. We'll also show some love to the um, North Indian Ocean as well because we do now have a very strong tropical cyclone that's expected to go into the uh, Indian coastline, probably somewhere around Kolkata uh, sometime this weekend. We could be seeing something of a pretty strong intensity moving through up there. This is certainly something we're going to be watching. And at the same time, this weekend, we're also looking at a typhoon developing in the Philippine Sea. I did say Thursday was going to be formation day for this typhoon. We don't really have anything on the satellite imagery yet, so I don't think it's worth saying Thursday anymore, but I do think Friday evening adjacent to the Philippines, there will be some typhoon activity just starting to get itself ramped up here. This system isn't expected to be strong, definitely not a uh, monster typhoon until later on in the weekend and as it gets up towards the Ryukyu Islands in Japan, where it will eventually get shredded by those uh, high values of wind shear, but it does look like we could be seeing a typhoon go for Japan later on uh, or, or early on at next week uh, with some pretty strong winds indeed. So we'll have to keep an eye on this forecast here. It's an interesting one uh, at that. We're just going to wait and see if the system does form, but it certainly looks like a high possibility at this time now. The Eastern Bay now fully on board with it as well. And the same thing with the Axis G3, at least in its formative stages, the Axis G3 now on board with something developing and moving through the Philippines. Regardless of formation, a lot of rainfall expected over the Philippine Islands, 400 millimetres at least in some areas. The Eastern Bay not so much uh, favouring the rainfall and same with the GFS model, uh, but we could still be seeing 100 to 200 millimetres fall in some parts of the Philippines, especially on the northern island of Luzon. That's a very quick look at the tropics. If you do want more tropics coverage, then please do subscribe to the Seconds channel, Cyclones Extra. I'm doing pilot YouTube shorts this time, so if you want short form forecasts for about 20 seconds, they're completely AI generated at this time, but they will be uh, my voice starting from today. So if you do want those, then make sure you are subscribed and click the bell as well. And also subscribe to this channel for more updates like this one. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run this show without those guys. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel as well. That is all for me and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.